G'day everyone. So one of the most um, popular questions, most common questions that we get uh, as we're traveling around and also on our YouTube videos in the comments um, is about our bike slider tray, which we have here in our little garage section underneath the bed. Um, we're looking at switching our two bikes out to put two trail mountain bikes instead. And so I thought before I do that in a couple of weeks time, um, because the new system is going to be quite different from the way that we have it at the moment in terms of how the bikes are set up and how they're mounted to the platform. I wanted to do a really quick uh, walkthrough tour of how we have it set up at the moment. And hopefully, uh, maybe if you're not looking for mountain bikes, you're actually looking just for regular uh, commuting sort of urban bikes, uh, this setup might be a good model for you um, and give you some tips and a bit of information and, and maybe some guidance and help you get it set up as well. I'll go through um, how we have it set up and any sort of things that I would change or do differently in the future if I did it again and things to watch out for as well. So if you're looking to install um, bikes in your van um, on a slider tray or even just mounted to the floor, hopefully this video will be informative for you. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll pull the slide tray out and I'll just give you a quick rundown of how we have it set up and then I'll pull the camera off and I'll give you a little POV tour as well. So I've got little toggles here in the bottom, press those down, pull them out and the whole slide tray comes out usually pretty easily. Now, obviously we have um, sort of some of our stuff in the back there against the wall. We've got our beach equipment and our bike um, gear and all the rest. And we've got the skateboard here on the side. So everything kind of fits just right. And as a result, we do have to keep it pretty uh, neat and tidy inside the tray so the way that we have it at the moment is we've got the bikes um, set up as like top and tail. So the front of the drop bar bike runs up to the front here and the other bike runs to the back here with handlebars in the back. And then we have the front wheels taken off and then the front fork is mounted to a, like a platform mount fork, fork bracket um, for quick release. So that's a different size to what a lot of mountain bikes use. A lot of mountain bikes will use a, uh, a through axle with a 100 or 110 millimeter uh, boost hub. And that means that for us to mount our mountain bikes, we actually need to change the, um, the adapter, the fork adapter little setup. So with the frames as they are, it's pretty quick and easy to install and uninstall the bikes. Um, all we have to do is disconnect the brakes. With disc brakes, it's not an issue remove the front wheel, and then we just lift the bike up, put it on the tray, lock the front fork in, and then we just put the front wheel here next to the frame and a little bit of double-sided Velcro holds the, uh, the wheel in place. Um, it works pretty well. Top and tail works really well when you do have urban commuting sort of touring bikes because we've got the, um, the bags here, the pannier bags set up so they kind of each fit into a little nook when they're top and tail. And Generally, we've been pretty happy with it. We did have to play around with the setup a little bit because we found that sometimes um, that you know certain parts are rubbing against each other and things are kind of wearing. So we just had to play with it a little bit and set it up in a way where everything's kind of snug and fit. And as we're driving along, it's not vibrating and moving and rubbing against each other. And as you know, it's pretty sturdy at the moment. Um, I've got the little fork um, platform mounts actually bolted through the, um, the base here so yeah, it works really well. And to put it in, so the, the little part here is a, like a lockout rail. So to put it in, I just have to press the button down and slide it all the way in. And that clicks in place and it doesn't go anywhere. So if we're parked up on a hill, it doesn't come out from underneath the bed. So that's a really good system, um, but there are some downsides and I'll, I'll grab the camera off the tripod in a second and I'll actually run through those. All right, here we are in POV mode. Right, so this is just to give you a good look at the current fork mount that we have. So it's a quick release and it's just a little cantilever. So that opens up and then you unscrew the other side and it loosens and then you can take the fork off and release it. Um, the base here is 12 millimeter um, heavy duty marine plywood and that just has a layer of uh, water-based um, clear coat varnish on it just to protect the wood from moisture and dirt and things like that. And the sides here, these are full extension heavy duty um, uh, extender rails. And I've got it just mounted. So 
there's a little piece of um, aluminium angle here on the inside which connects to the plywood base and then I've got the rail and the rail is connected to a larger piece of aluminium angle on the side. As a result, we, um, we did have to play around with it a little bit. We had to put this gap underneath just to ensure that the heads from the bolts that attach this to the floor in the van and then the bolts and the fasteners from here um, just to make sure that they would actually clear each other and not sort of foul and catch on each other. And then we just used a bunch of um, bolts and sort of wide load washers on the side there. So I guess one of the main sort of things to keep in mind when you do one of these setups is be really mindful of the, um, the clearance of the bike. So when we measured the bikes up, we put them, took the forks off and put them on the ground. We measured from the, from the ground up to the top of the seat with the seat all the way into the frame. And then we added a couple of centimeters and it was actually lucky that we did this because we didn't really take into account for this sort of stuff here, this gap off the floor, the thickness of the material, everything, it kind of all added up and it added about sort of two centimeters, three centimeters to the overall height of the bike um, than what we anticipated. And as a result, the, um, the seat clears the part of the bed frame here, it clears it by probably about a centimeter. So when you, if you go down the path of doing like a little slider tray like this, uh, one of the most important things to keep in mind is to give yourself as much clearance as possible and don't forget to factor in these little bits, you know, the extra height from here, the thickness of the material, all the rest. Give yourself a bit of clearance because you don't want to build the slider tray after you've already installed your bed frame and then find that it actually doesn't fit in your bike, um, doesn't, doesn't go underneath, that would really suck. The other thing that we've found as well is the, um, the rail mechanism, the slider rail. Um, it's worth spending a few dollars extra to get one that's a higher quality unit. Uh, this one was just a cheap one on eBay. When I say cheap, it was still probably about $200 for the pair, uh, maybe a little bit more, $250. And one of the little mechanisms actually broken is the first day I used it so it doesn't lock when it, slide, when it slides all the way out. It does do a halfway lock and it, does a, it locks when it's in, so it's sort of three quarters of the way there but I would recommend maybe looking around and buying from a reputable company and buying a slider rail from a, a decent company that has a warranty and sort of a bit more after sales service. So they're the two main things I would say. Just be really mindful, be careful of the clearance and the bed frame and you know, opt to spend a little bit more, do a little bit more research and get a good quality pair of slider rails if you go down this path. I mean, there are people which just sort of forego the slider tray and they just uh, wheel the bikes in backwards and mount the forks and actually bolt this fork mount directly to the floor. Um, but we have found it very, very um, convenient and handy to be able to actually wheel the bikes out and be able to access them on each side. We can put the um, doors all the way out and then we can get access to the bikes and put them all in and get access to the accessories and everything else. So it's worked really well for us and we're gonna keep this set up for now. But if it ever came to it, um, if I got a bike that was too large and it would fail on the, on the frame, um, I would rather remove the slider tray than have to try and modify the frame and raise the height of the frame. Okay, so there we have it. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. The slider tray works really well. We're really happy with it. And um, yeah, we're just looking forward to getting some trail mountain bikes. So our new bikes are gonna be um, like hardtail mountain bikes. Uh, with the wider sort of um, 27 and a half inch plus tires and with the adjustable uh, dropper seat post as well. So our kind of, um, our thoughts on that are is that we still needed something to do short sort of town commutes, but we also wanted something that we could do a bit of fun trail riding as well. Um, so a plus size hardtail with a dropper post to hopefully make it easier to install on the tray rather than having to get a tool and slam the seat down each time. Um, that's our sort of, um, that's our idea, to simplify things and to give us a bit more versatility to be able to ride trails and unsealed roads and sort of get out there a little bit more. Uh, we're gonna trial it, see how it goes for a few months. I get the bikes, hopefully in about one or two weeks, I'll have the new bikes. Uh, I'll get them installed in a couple of weeks. I'll make a new video and release that when it's ready. And yeah, we'll try them out, see how they go for a few months. And then I'll probably make a video and, and make a decision from there and, and let you know what we found the pros and cons of each sort of setup and each kind of bike. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, 
I've probably missed a heap of stuff. So if there's anything that didn't make sense or if you have any questions, like always, feel free, leave a comment or you can jump into our website, which is comfortablylost.com and you can send us an email through the Contact Us form or you can jump on Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, get in touch with us, it's all under the same name, Comfortably Lost, and you can send us a message and we'll try and get back to you and help you out. Um, if we have any information that we can share, we're always happy to do it. So yeah, until next time, peace out, have a great day and um, thanks for watching, bye.